So I'm curious, specifically, so I'm, right now I'm going to talk about my own research, uh, the research that I did as a doctoral student, and this is sort of late-breaking research in that this is a game, Fable 3, that just came out in October, and I'm curious how many people have played Fable 3, and I will put that poll up right now. And you could let me know if you've played Fable 3. So far, no one has. 50% have voted. Okay. Has anyone out there played Fable 3? That's, that's, okay. No, no one here has played Fable 3. Okay. So, since none of you have played Fable 3, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to flip over to show you just a, a, a short video of Fable 3 so you just have a little bit of a sense of what it is. And hopefully this will work and hopefully you'll be able to hear it. And we'll see if it works. And keep in mind that this is a this is this is a review. So this is someone else's IGN. It's a, a game review site. So someone else's opinion on Fable 3. But I think it gives a good overview of what Fable 3 is all about. Welcome to Bush Gardens, Virginia. Okay, we're we're gonna pretend that Bush Gardens, Virginia is part of this. So, um, so after this, sorry, there's a, a slight, slight advertisement and then we'll go right into it. The Fable franchise has often been defined as much by its charismatic spokesperson, Peter Molyneux, as far-reaching promises as it has its actual content. With Fable 3, I'm sure it will be no different. Grand ideas were tossed around in the lead-up to its release. Some of them panned out, others did not. Whatever your expectations are, you should know this. Fable 3 is a great, if sometimes disjointed and sloppy, adventure that is filled with a lot of original concepts. You play as a prince or princess, the child of Fable 2's hero who went on to rule the mythical world of Albion. Your sibling is the king, and his iron-fisted rule has left the kingdom weary and worn. Through Fable 3, you work to win allies and ultimately overthrow your brother before taking control as ruler yourself. That part of the end is a fantastic climax. Ah, yes, one's heart soars before such The world of Albion is a lot of fun to explore, especially if you've played past Fable games. The setting is 50 years past Fable 2, bringing Albion into the industrial age, and the world has changed. Though the graphics aren't the best on Xbox 360, the atmosphere really sells the world as real. Everything is presented with a tongue-in-cheek British style of humor, one part slapstick, one part dark comedy. There is a ton of voice acting here, and the majority of it is very high interesting and quirky characters, and they've all got a voice to let you know what they're thinking. Easily the most impressive part of the presentation is how made Fable 3. Everything is streamlined and simplified, which means less time fiddling with options and more time just playing the game. The breadcrumb trail is back, though it is a little buggy. Building on this concept of accessibility, the developers almost entirely did away with menus, replacing them with 3D interactive options. The map is a particular high point and a huge improvement over Fable 2. The ultimate goal in Fable 3 is to win enough followers to take over as king or queen. And to do that, you'll have to hit the campaign trail. Heroic deeds, such as completing quests, will get you far, but you can also do it the old-fashioned way by pounding the pavement and shaking hands. Congratulations! Getting out of my little people has been off. Certain main quests must be completed to finish the game, and you'll have to make campaign promises to important people. But you're afforded an incredible amount of flexibility in how you want to go about playing the game. The great strength and occasional weakness of Fable 3 is that the whole world operates on a simulation. On the one hand, it means there's a phenomenal amount of freedom to be good or evil. On the flip side, you occasionally wind up with voices overrunning each other, bugs, or generally nonsensical situations. Fable 3's quest design ranges from story-heavy adventures to simple fetch quests. Though a surprising number of side quests are a lot of fun and fully fleshed out. Like 
The pass table means there is plenty to collect here, adding many hours to the base game. The commerce. Okay, so I think that gives you a pretty good sense of what it's all about. I'm just going to switch right back to uh, the presentation. Okay. So let me just. Okay. So hopefully everyone now can see the slides. Yes. Good. Okay. So. Um, so as you can see, Fable Three is a role. As a male or female, you go in evil fantasy setting. What's really interesting about this game is that you start out kind of as this prince or princess, and then as you gather enough followers, if you might have heard, you will become king or queen of Albion. And at that point, you start making choices about your kingdom. And those choices, to some extent, have some kind of ethical aspect to them. So for example, you might choose to uh, drain a lake in your town or you might choose to preserve it and those have monetary value associated with them and your goal in the game is to try to get enough money, six million, in your in your treasury so that when this darkness comes at the end of the game, at this final battle, you will be able to save all of the people, all of the citizens in Albion. Okay, so if you have six million in your treasury, you will save all of the citizens. If you don't, at the end, then you end up not saving everyone. So you have to make these choices throughout the game about, okay, well, do I raise the taxes or not raise the taxes, and how is that going to affect my town? And then those effects are then simulated. Or you might be having, you know, you might decide to build an orphanage or to build a brothel, right? And that that has different monetary values associated with them, but then it also affects your own morality, and then it also affects the people in your town. So you're trying to negotiate all of those different kinds of goals in the game. And so what I did when I was thinking about this is that I kind of moved away from just you know, what is ethics, but really thinking about what's ethical thinking. And so thinking about, you know, the ability, what is, you know, what is it about the ability to analyze and assess and reflect on our decisions and actions and to understand the consequences and complexities of social issues and social questions, such as, you know, what do we do about taxes? What do we do about this lake? What do we do about this orphanage? And you know what you know the ability to use appropriate judgment in these different situations and to make choices that lead to being, you know, a good person or, or maybe it's 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 a, a king or queen and the right king or queen in this ever changing world. And so I was interested in how people make ethical decisions. And then is there some environment like Fable 3 that might support the practice of these ethical thinking skills like you know understanding biases, understanding different perspectives, you know what are the components of ethical thinking and decision making in Fable 3, what are the connections among empathy, reasoning, and awareness and how ethical decisions are made in Fable 3, what are the design elements that are related to making ethical decisions, and if you identify more with your avatar, do, does that affect how you make ethical decisions? And by making ethical decisions, I don't mean good decisions. I mean making decisions that you think through ethically, in that regardless if you make a negative, so-called negative decision or so-called positive decision, it still was interesting to me what kinds of skills people are using to make those decisions. So. I, do this. I, uh, I, split, I split the participants into three camps. The first one, um, condition one, um, all of the people doing this uh, experiment were, were male. They were all 18 to 34. Um, the males who were playing the game, half of them played as a male avatar. Uh, in condition two, those male, uh, half those males, um, the other half of the males playing the game, uh, they played as a female avatar. So in the beginning, you can choose, you want to be the prince or princess, as you saw in the demo. Um, those people had to choose either to be the male or to be the female. Okay? 
So they're separate people. They're playing either as male or playing as female. And then the third condition, uh, those people did not play the game at all. Instead, what they did was they, they kept a journal and they worked through ethical scenarios that were written. So all of these were written. And they were based on the ethical scenarios in Fable 3. So they worked through some of those scenarios, such as should we save the lake or not. So they, so they didn't play the game at all. OK. And so those people who were in condition one and two, they took a survey before they started the game, um, just, to, just about general ways that they think through ethics. Um, they played the game for about nine hours um, to a certain point in the game. They kept journals throughout the game where they, they wrote about how they, they worked through ethical decisions when they were playing Fable 3. And then finally, uh, we did an in-person observation of the gameplay. So I would watch the, the player play through Fable 3 at a specific point, and they would talk aloud, and they would talk through how, you know, what they, what they were thinking when they were making ethical decisions, and then I did an interview afterward. In the control group, they just did the survey. They did those five written scenarios that I talked about. And they kept those. They kept five journals on those uh, written scenarios, and then they had an interview. And they did not play the game. Okay. Just making sure there's no questions. Okay. So I looked specifically at some of the ethical scenarios in Fable Three, and I'm not going to go into too much detail about those specific scenarios. But for example, drain the lake. Um, that was one where they had to decide. Like I said, do I drain the lake or uh, do I preserve it? And there was different monetary value. And one thing I did was I added a new scenario. And I, I gave each person one new written scenario, regardless if they played the game or not. At the end of everything, I asked them to talk through another scenario where they had to talk about, from their own perspective, whether or not they would kind of tell on someone who was, they thought they saw might have seen steal a drill at work. And so I wanted to see how, after playing the game or doing the written scenarios, if there were differences in how people thought through that decision. Okay. Uh, 